On the left side of the workspace are the auto-hide windows, each with a different function. We're going to look at them one by one. They're called auto-hide windows because they open automatically when we hover the cursor over them and close when we take the cursor away. If we don't want them to open automatically when we accidentally move the cursor over them, we can disable this function by selecting Global Preferences from the Edit menu. selecting Special GUI Effects, and unchecking the Hoverable Auto-Hide Window Selectors box. We apply our preferences by clicking the Apply Global button, and now we have to click on the tabs to open the windows. We're going to enable the Auto-Hide option for this video. Each window has various controls we can use to change its position and appearance. If we don't want the window to close when we move the cursor away, we can click the Stick button. When we do this, we can move the cursor away from the window to work with any graphical element and the window stays open. We can hide the window by clicking the Hide button. If we close the window completely using the Close button like this, it will disappear from the Auto Hide Window tray. But we can get it back by opening the View menu and selecting Explore Windows. Here's Format Explorer. If we select it, it reappears. We can get the Process Console back by selecting it directly from the View menu. We can also expand the windows vertically using the Expand button. If we deactivate the button, we can resize the window manually. We can also choose the window position using this drop-down menu. For example, with Format Explorer, we can put it in the corner that's best for us, or back in its original position, or we can turn it into a floating window, which is particularly useful if we're working with two monitors. Some of the windows also have an extension showing additional information. We can open and close it by clicking the Show Extension and Hide Extension buttons. The first window in the tray is the Process Console. The Process Console tells us about the processes that are being executed. For example, let's apply a histogram transformation to the image on the right. We apply it, and the console tells us that it has written the swap files, that it has applied the three transformations to the three color channels, and it gives the process duration, in this case in milliseconds. The console also accepts commands from classic Linux commands, for example, to list the contents of a directory, to commands specific to PixInsight. To find out which commands are available, we can type in the word help, and several lists of commands appear. This first one is a list of specific tool commands. We can use these to apply a tool with a series of specific parameters to open an image without having to open that tool's graphical interface. We also have internal PixInsight commands. We're going to look at two of these. The first is Parallel. To view the help documentation for each command, all we need to do is type help followed by the name of the command, in this case, help parallel. We can use this command to limit the number of processor threads that PixInsight can use. To do this, we use the parameter minus P. 
If we type parallel minus p equals 8, PixInsight will use a maximum of 8 processor threads and the computer can use the rest of the threads for other tasks. If we want PixInsight to be able to use all the threads again, we can type parallel minus a. The second command we're going to look at is close. Imagine that we're in the middle of a complex project and we've got lots of images open. Suddenly, we decide to close them all. But because we've been modifying the images, PixInsight will ask us if we want to close each image without saving one by one. We can force close all the windows without saving by typing close minus minus force asterisk. The asterisk closes all the images and the minus minus force parameter tells PixInsight to close all the windows without asking us anything. The second window in the tray is View Explorer. Information about the images we have open appears here. At the moment, it's showing a list with the two images. If we open the extension, it shows the basic data for each image, like the resolution in pixels per inch, the geometry, the bit depth, and so on. We'll come back to this window later when we talk about previews. The third window is the Process Explorer, where we can access all the tools. The tools are listed in categories. The first two categories are dynamic, meaning that the items in them change based on the way we use the program. The recently used category shows the tools we used most recently in order. This is very useful for tasks that involve using the same tools more than once. For example, adjusting masks requires repeated use of morphology, convolutions, and histogram or curve transformations. The tools we are using over and over again to make these adjustments will be shown in this list. The most used category shows the tools we generally use the most, so this list is tailored to the way each user uses the program. There's also a favorites category. We can add our favorite tools here. Say we don't like the TGV denoise tool. We can remove it from the favorites list by selecting it and clicking on the icon with a heart and a minus sign. If we change our mind and want to add it back to our favorites, we select it. And now the heart has a plus sign, meaning that we can add the tool to our favorites again. Underneath the favorites, we have all the tools in categories. For example, here we have the Color Spaces tools, Channel Combination, Channel Extraction, Tools to Convert to Grayscale and to Color, and so on. If we can't remember which category a tool is in, we can open the complete list by clicking on All Processes. All the tools are listed here in alphabetical order. We can also search for a tool by typing its name in this space. For example, Linear Fit. And it takes us to it automatically. Finally, we can see each tool's documentation in the Process Explorer's extension. The documentation is an HTML file that we can view here because PixInsight has a built-in web browser, Chromium. We can type any web address into this field to load a website within PixInsight. We can also open this browser via the Window menu, selecting Web Browser Windows, then New Web Browser Window. Now we can type any web address here to open and browse a website. This is useful because it means we can load any page or article we like and refer to it while we're working on our images and all without having to leave PixInsight.